champion in two strength sports and an ITF world champion powerlifter. Marty is also a national and world champion team coach. Uh, so today we're going to talk about intens intensity enhancers. Um, I think in a world where everything is trying to be made easier, strategies for making lifting harder is where the real games lie. Right. So, Marty, let's talk about what we mean by intensity enhancers. What is that? Well, uh, you hit the nail on the head. Everybody in this day and age is trying to figure out ways to make heavyweights light. Uh, we take the opposite approach. We're trying to make lightweights heavy. And the rationale behind that is that we get a lot more safer, assuming that you're synced up with the techniques, uh, and you've got your tactics squared away. Uh, this this is this is this is the approach that you want to take. Um, now, when we talk about the the actual intensity enhancers themselves, uh, they're numerous. We 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 love to start with range of motion. Okay, you with me? You tracking? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Go to, go to any commercial gym and what you're going to see is probably the biggest single sin is shorten, purposely shorten range of motion, uh, particularly on the major lifts. Again, we take the opposite approach. What we're looking to do is we want full range of motion. Uh, in a lot of cases, we'll even look for extended or exaggerated range of motion. Uh, full range of motion on a bench press would be the bar. If you're using a barbell, the bar comes all the way down to the chest on every rep. Uh, extended or exaggerated range of motion would be using dumbbells to allow the bells to actually stretch below the level of the chest. Okay? Uh, It's an, right, full range of motion, and you'll get much better uh, results out of that. Well, you touched on the whole psychology of the, of the partial rep movement. The, the, the idea is, is that I'll use uh, a, a shortened rep stroke. I'll be able to handle more weight. I'll be much more impressive to myself and, and to the people in this gym. Uh, but what's happening, in factually, is you're creating zones of weakness because any portion of that rep range that you're not working, you're in danger, brother. Uh, particularly on the, on heavy squats, you see partial squatters, and if they, you know, on any occasion get pushed below that turnaround point, they're, you know, you, you collapse. You collapse under the poundage. You have no training down there, right? So yeah. it, it, it's 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 a major problem. Well, um, we want to push ahead. So range of motion is is, is primary. Uh, secondary is pauses. We love pauses on our uh, squats and our benches. Okay, uh, a pause bench press and a pause squat increases the intensity. Increases the uh, Everything about the the movement is is amplified. Uh, we use pause squats as a great way to fix depth for our competition squatters. In competition, they have to go below parallel. You know, the best way in the world to drill that in is uh, give them four to six weeks of nothing but pause squats, right? And you call them up. You call them up. You have the coach calls them up at the turnaround on each rep. Uh, so we love pause squats, we love pause benches. The equivalent of the pause in the deadlift is the slowed lowering. It's very chic in this day and age to drop the deadlift at the top of the rep. Um, back in my day, that would get you kicked out so fast. Uh, if you started dropping 
deadlift reps at the top in Hugh Cassidy's basement or Marshall Peck's basement, you're gone, man. I mean, so the slowed lowering factually built our deadlifts up like crazy. You don't throw away the negative on the squat. You don't throw away the negative on the bench press. Why well, throw it away in the deadlift? Okay. You, you with me? On, on, on the deadlift. Now, there are times that you might want to just concentrate on, on the eccentric pull portion. That's fine. That's another arrow in our quiver. But when guys tell me, oh, we purposely don't do negatives in the deadlift, and they have all these, these reasons, and it's like, well, you know, we always use negatives in our deadlifts, and, you know, my, my guys held world records. Uh, it, it, I think I think you're throwing away so much of the muscle building. Also in the deadlift, that ability to coil, you you induce tension on the negative, and at the turnaround, it's explosion, right? And that's what we do on our squats too, and that's what we do on our benches. We build tension on the descent, and then bang, we turn it around with explosion. Now, having said that. The third intensity enhancer is to actually dick around with the rep speeds. We like to think of rep speeds as either purposely slowed, grind, normal, and explosive. Okay, are you with me? Yeah. Three separate and distinct rep speeds. You should think the rep speed before the top set. Well, actually, you should think the rep you should think the rep seed speed below before every set of every workout. What rep speed am I going to use, even if it's normal? All normal means is that you allow the central nervous system to move the weight at uh, what the body feels is appropriate. You're not seizing control of the um, physiologic steering wheel and say, no, you know, we're purposely going to go slow. Or, no, we're purposely going to explode. Uh, you know, you're just allowing, um, you know, nature to sort of blindly guide the rep speed. Okay. So. Question on that real quick. Yeah. On, let's say you're doing bench press, would you ever mix the, the rep speeds? Would you do an explosive set and then a grind set? No, you're, you no, 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 no. You're cross, you're, you're, you're cross purposes. You'll just send your nervous system into, you know, uh, spasms. No. No. Pick okay. one. Stay with it. Uh, in fact, we'll work, we'll work a rep speed for weeks at a time. Really get into it. Also, let's, let's talk about grind speed. We don't use the ridiculously slowed uh, lowerings and, 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 and uh, the, the really slow pushing that you'd see like in the old Nautilus or super slow now. Uh, our grind speed is what we like to call barely slowed, right? You understand that concept? Barely slowed, right? Also, our pauses, when we talk about pauses in the bench press, our pauses are barely paused. We don't, we're not holding the bar or the bells down for five seconds on each rep. It, it, uh, when, you get in, when you get into that, what happens is that it degrades poundage handling ability to an unacceptable level, right? Super, right. super long pauses, super exaggerated stuff. It, you know, there's a point where you, you need to handle a certain minimum amount of payload in, in order to trip the adaptive trigger response, right? At the start of a cycle, lifting cycle, would um, you tend to spend, tend to start with like the grind speed We like grind when people are burnt out on explosion. Everybody's exploding in this day and age. Explosion is easy, okay? Grind's hard. Uh, so we, we love to have the grind in the hip pocket as the contrast. Contrast is king. That's how you continually stimulate progress, right? You have about 100 uh, proven valid, empirically proven strategies in your backpack and uh, when one goes dry, you, 
you pull out one that sufficiently contrasts what you're using. You don't want slight variations. Now listen, we don't want to get back to the to the intensity enhancers because we're kind of getting off. As uh, what's it, you know, one thing leads That's to another. Reps, drop sets. Okay, yeah. Well, um, all right. So we've talked about uh, range of motion. Uh, also. And intensity enhancers, we like purposely shorten range of motion, as in rack work. You don't see anybody doing any rack work in this day and age. Uh, we used to break uh, the key lifts down into three segments. We'd work the bottom, the middle, the top. Uh, even if you just work the top doing rack work in deadlifts, a tremendous benefit. It's a great way to shake up your central nervous system. What a fantastic contrast if you've been doing um, you know you're sick of regular deadlifts and you're and you want to stay in the deadlift game but may, you know maybe your your grips a little weak who knows who knows what but if you rack work has fallen into disuse and that's that's a real shame because there's a real there's a real purpose for partials we used to use rack work on the bench if you have problems lock on the lockouts uh, some partial benching you know it's a, again it's a great way to shake things up also, rack work and isometrics are closely interrelated. We love isometrics. We get a lot of isometrics lifting these super heavy weights that we lift, right? So, again, isometrics, intensity enhancer, shortened range of motion, intensity enhancers. Okay, into the, to the bodybuilding world, the four straps and the drop sets. Um, four straps have their place. But if you worked with any real pros or, or worked around any real pro bodybuilders, these guys are not doing like, you know, eight forced reps. They're doing one or two or maybe three at the most. And, and the one or two are going to be in the really big stuff. Like if you're doing whatever, like Dorian doing, you know, leg presses with uh, 1345s in each side, you don't do five forced reps with that, you know. Maybe you get Leroy to help you with one or maybe two, right? Um, so at the top levels, the forced rep is used. First off, you've got to have a, a really together training partner. If you have a bad training partner and you insist on doing forced reps, that is a, that's the red line to the emergency room, brother. <laughs> that's not going to end well, uh, particularly if you guys are forced rep crazy as a lot of young guys tend to get. You know, they think, well, if uh, two is good, uh, six is uh, three times as good. And, uh, that, uh, yeah, that's too much. That usually, yeah, usually doesn't end well. I mean, Dorian, I believe he would do, like, say, a set of bench press, and he, he'd do his warm-ups and work up to 100 all-out set yeah. with a couple of forced reps, and after that, you're totally spent. Yeah, yeah, he was done. He'd have Leroy, Leroy would step in. Leroy was the perfect training partner. And, and he'd just step in and just help, help Dorian finish the rep he was on and maybe give him one more, right? Maybe help him give one more. Right, right, right. So uh, now drop sets are something that is it, it, sort of a self-administered thing. And you can sort of take control of your own. Uh, this, is, this falls into the extended rep repertoire. And uh, I don't know, pick a, pick an exercise, JP. What do you say? Dumbbell overhead press? Yeah. Okay, so we're doing uh, overhead dumbbell press. Uh, let's say uh, you work up to a pair of 50s for seven reps, right? No, let's say uh, you work up to uh, 50s for eight. Okay, immediately you set those down. Uh, you, you drop from the 50s down to 40s. Okay, which is what uh, five percent drop, and you rep that out strictly. Uh, I would drop from forties to thirties. One final finisher, right? Usually, classic drop set is three phase. Uh, do your top set, cut the weight, cut the weight one more time, rep it out. You've had some experience with drop sets in your, your old career. Was that the strategy that the boys were using back then? Well, yeah. We used to do 21s, we called them, for curls. And yep, 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 for yep, yep, yep. Now, now, how did that go? It was like seven full, seven half, seven partial. How did that go? Yeah, well, kicked your ass. But, I mean, 
But but that's what it you was, know, wasn't it? It was, it was good. It was real good to do. Now, he didn't use that as a main mass builder and a main strength builder, but... It's a finisher. It was good to do it once in a while to switch off and, you know, get a killer pump. Or as a finisher. Yeah, and then you can go back and change the pump if you need to. The guys like drop sets as finishers. Yeah. Right. That's right out of the Tom Platt's uh, school of horror, who I have a lot of respect for. Yeah. We, we like Tom a lot. Uh, okay. So again, this uh, this this whole idea is is that we start with this core contention. Let's use the extended range of motion or the exaggerated range of motion, or at least, the very least, the full range of motion, which will make those lightweights heavy. Then on top of that, we can make it even more intense by lumping in some of these intensity enhancers, right? Judiciously, right? Um, again, go ahead. increased frequency. Say again? Well, yeah, that would be another, yeah, a, 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 a real intensity enhancer is going on a specialization program. If you are uh, working your, your power bench once a week, maybe you have a second session, right? So much depends on the goal. What's the goal? Is the goal uh, to improve lean muscle mass? Is the goal to uh, reduce, maximally reduce body fat percentile, right? So much depends on the goal. Uh, so it's tough to say, uh, you know, oh, we're going to pick this particular training strategy because uh, we always pick str uh, training strategies in relation to the goal, right? Right. right. How about time sets? Uh, not, uh, yeah, trying to complete them. Uh, I tell you, the, the problem that we had with time sets is, again, if you get too quick on them, it tends to reduce the pounding, poundage handling uh, ability to a point where there's just not enough resistance to create any kind of, of adaptive response. No hypertrophy, nothing, you know. Uh, yeah. it, you're just kind of waving it around. You might be able to wave it fast. Uh, you might get some lactic acid buildup, but it's almost like a, some sort of a quick cardio thing. Yeah, we're trying to whip through it, you know, like Bubba Gump there, you know, all the different shrimp etouffee, shrimp gumbo, shrimp this, shrimp that, and intensity, yeah. intensity enhancer, this, that, and the other thing, because we know that uh, everybody wants everything compressed now. How are we doing on time there, buddy? Uh, I think we're real good. We're fine. We're going to wrap it up here. Excellent. Um, we're trying to power pack these things in to get as much information in in as little frame time frame as possible. Kind of like yeah. making lightweights heavy. Yeah, so that's real good on intensity answers. Uh, hopefully uh, there's a couple little tidbits or a bunch of them that people can use in their uh, upcoming workouts. Uh, anything else you want to say on that? No. Uh, I, I, I think that they should be used with caution. I think young guys tend to go crazy on them and tend to get injured with them. Uh, they're, um, well, now, now ha I'm not talking about range of motion. Range of motion is sacred. But I'm talking about the forced reps, the drop sets, you know, the, the pumpers, the bodybuilding-related, um, you know, keep that, keep that to a minimum. Uh, but do concentrate in that on on those uh, that that range of motion. That's that's the main one, and also with signature techniques, which we should get into also at some point in the future. Technique first. Yeah, technique then tactics. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's about it. I appreciate that uh, you didn't go sideways on us this week. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Try I'm to get. Yeah, uh, just try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sedate me. <laughs> All right, real good. We'll wrap it up. Um, check out Marty's weekly column, Raw with Marty Gallagher, at www.ironcompany.com. He lets me say anything I want.
Don't forget the new Kirk bar. I got the Kirk Kowalski power bar that we're working on right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, in our touch. We're trying to get a couple little things dialed in, so hopefully that's going to be ready in the next month or so. So be on the lookout for that. As soon as our scientists finish concocting it in our top secret laboratories. That's right. They... When the metal orgy is done and all that good stuff. <laughs> metal orgy? Metal orgy. Oh. Yeah, they can write in their topics. Maybe we'll read them. Yeah, and eventually we'll do Q&As. Yep. Um, yep. You know, we've not announced any of these yet, but I want to do some Q&As. There's some great questions that people have out there that, uh, that uh, you could do a great job answering. So uh, we'll we can, do that as we go. But uh, we can bring Kirk, yeah, I think that's it. We can bring Kirk in as a life coach. Thank you.